if any kids are watching this, anybody who's younger, even adults, you really need to, you know, get this stuff sorted. If it's re if it's a problem for you and you're sad and you're lonely and you're depressed and you're turning to social media so that you can message people and turn into groups so that you can get attention and all those kind of things, it's really, really not healthy for you. Stop messing about. <coughs> Hello, fellow Aspies. Neurotypicals. Hello, welcome Aspergers Gross subscribers and anybody else who has happened to stumble onto my video today. Um, this is poorly trimmed beard coming to you for another video. And today we're going to be talking about extroversion, introversion, and their possible links to autism. Now it is worth saying that this is not going to be a scientific and logic and factual based video. It's it's, it's basically more of a motivational and a, just a video that can show you my experiences with um, being introverted and being extroverted. Basically this video is going to be about how I perceive um, people on the autistic spectrum who talk about being introverted or talk about some of the, the limits that having autism can have on your social life. Now what really sparked this idea was my personal experience with it. Uh, coming back from Thailand recently, actually only the previous day to making this video, I've been reflecting on my different conversations with people and the, the work that I've done personally to improve myself in my social standing and to improve my body language, my facial expressions, all those types of things um, that have helped me um, feel a lot more confident in myself and feel a lot more socially accepted and confident. So why do I want to talk to you about it? Well, I want to help people. That's one of my main reasons for doing all this stuff. Main reasons for science, for sport. I want to inspire people. I want to help people. And one of the problems that I see a lot in the autistic community is either lack of confidence, um, motivation, and just general abstaining from all kinds of social interaction, particularly with people who you don't particularly understand, um, like uh, neurotypicals, you may think that neurotypicals are, they're irrational, and maybe they may be in comparison to our logical brains, but they don't act in an irrational way in terms of their emotions, they are more emotionally driven, but if you understand them, and you understand yourself, you can better break down the barriers and get a bit more communication going, which can help you a lot in trying to make friends in the, in the life, because whether you like it or not, most people are not autistic, and we, we don't live in, our, in an autistic society that's very open to the ideas of Aspies and stuff who want to share these ways of living, because it's not, it's not that's how it works. The majority rules in most cases, and we need to learn to adapt and does that mean we should shy away and um, cry and be, you know, introverted and not talk to people for the sake of anxiety, all those kind of things? No, you shouldn't be. If you're anybody out there who has desire, who has passion to do well in life, be happy, then you should have the passion to overcome problems in your life as well. And this is not this is not a separate thing from extroversion and introversion. I want to make sure that I make the distinction first that, well not first, um, I've rambled a bit already, is that if, you, if you're comfortable being introverted and you've got no problems being on your own, you know, doing your own stuff, having your own interests, and um, going for our, for our life, feeling content, you know, that's fine. You don't need to do anything. But if you're an introvert, and you don't have that many friends, you don't have that much confidence, you don't, You want to go up to girls, you want to interact with them, or you want to go to guys and interact with them, then you should really try and take on a lot of what I'm trying to say in this video. It's not uncommon that autism has been very significantly correlated with um, introversion, but introversion and extroversion is quite a difficult thing to characterise in terms of psychology. Um, if you want to read more about this kind of stuff, you can and look at uh, Grimes, if you type in Grimes, then extroversion and autism, you'll be able to read some papers that will 
kind of lead you down a, a good path of um, information on that. But as I said at the start of the video, I want to give you a breakdown of some of the things that I've learned myself. Because I reckon about four or five years ago when I was in my school days, although I was quite passionate about talking to people, talking to girls, and all those kind of things, I did classify my, myself as an introvert, typically because of my autism diagnosis. Um, I felt like I was more my um, prerogative to just follow the trend of being autistic and realising that you're not really going to get on with anybody and you're going to feel alienated for the rest of your life, which is not the case at all. It's not the case. So if you've got, if you've got something in your brain that's telling you like, I'm autistic, I can't do that, you're wrong. Mind this though, it will be significantly very, depending on your diagnosis, depending on your personal personality profile, it's a bit of a mouthful, um, it will be hard. It will be really, really difficult. There are two main barriers to learning and growing that I've, I've, I've kind of highlighted um, for myself. The first is, number one, I have mentioned it a little bit before in this video, you have to be willing to accept that your views are not imperative. Although you are more, tend to be more logical and tend to form a, a more logical thought pattern, it does not mean that your thoughts on socialising are the top. Once you accept this, this idea, you can begin to work on yourself socially, you can break down your, the stigmas and the the stereotypes that you give people, uh, particularly neurotypicals who have more of a, a loud, more extroverted personality. My mum's just come back from home, so she's very anxious to talk to me. But I've got to finish this video. Um, God, what was I talking about? Yes, the first thing is you need to pass that because although you may look at people at school who were loud, obnoxious, bullies, whatever, um, they'll put you in that same kind of category of being weird and they'll give you a stereotype. And if you give them a stereotype and say that you could never be friends with them because of the way that they act and the, the, the differences that you have, then you've got to really ask yourself why. And ask yourself, am I really in a position to claim that my way of... <clears throat> am I really in a position to claim that my way of thinking and my thinking about socialising is more important than this. The second, the second is motivation. Aspies tend to have a lot more anxiety when it comes to socialising, typically because of eye contact. Our body language is not learned passively like people. If you want to be good at body language, if you want to be good at socialising and you put all the effort in, you do years and years of ongoing research, you look at YouTube videos, you look at papers, you work on yourself, you document yourself and your interactions with other people and try and work on those things that are, are barriers to your um, loneliness or your ability to get on with people and you need to work on those things. So the thing is, is that actually on the low level, if you don't have an interest and you don't try, we're going, you're going to be very much socially impaired and you're not going to be able to do as well in a social room but if you are interested in it and you work at it you'll find that you'll be a lot more equipped for social situations than most neurotypicals like myself and I'm not tooting my own trumpet but I guess I guess I am actually be quiet <laughs> uh. okay so yes I am tooting my own trumpet I've done a lot of work into this kind of stuff in myself and um, I've had a lot of barriers, um, particularly in stereotyping people and believing that my version of reality is, is more important than theirs. Once I did a lot of, of grand things to break down those, those barriers between people and those walls, I was able to better connect with people. And by socialising and being open with my opinions and emotions and trying to really in-depthly understand people rather than sub submit uh, submitting them rather than ignoring them and just getting rid of them because you don't believe that they have any logical backing to their reasons and 
emotions are complicated, as you probably know, and it's even harder as an Aspie because we can't really um, monitor or see or experience our emotions as um, neurotypicals do. For example, I experience only the physical symptoms of my emotions um, and obviously the behavioural symptoms of them as well. And being growing up and be, um, being an Aspie, being a good Aspie, a good member of society who can socialise properly, it's very important to understand your own emotions and try and find some way of understanding them logically and understanding the effects that some of these emotions can have on your perception, your behaviour and your physical symptoms as well. And they're really important three things to consider when you are going about life because although you may not notice them, emotions do have an incredible effect on your perception, your behaviour, your physical experience of the world. One of the more interesting phenomenon 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 <laughs> I can't seem to find my words today. One of the more interesting things about autism and um, its existence in myself is that I am autistic and I hate enclosed spaces with lots of people, but I still find the ability to go out dancing and go clubbing and go to bars and go to social events and actually quite enjoy them. This may have been a result of just going to them, plucking up the courage and um, battling through the anxiety that comes with these kind of situations and a combination of, you know, the, the work that I've been doing myself. But obviously it's very strange because even in the first stages of me going out and drinking with my friends, I had a, a really, really good time. I'm not going to... Obviously, if you're going to go out, it's you're going to want to have a good time. Um, and previously I'd, I'd have this cool down period of... of socialising and being around people that I'd have to limit so I'd have maybe one or two hours of ability to concentrate and work with my emotions. Obviously at that stage my facial expressions that I've learned and my body expressions are um, not autonomous so it obviously plucked a lot of energy from me. Um, but in, in dancing situations in clubs the combination of the alcohol obviously which makes you more socially fluent and pliable, makes you a better socialite, and the the music, which is rhythmic, it's very upbeat, and it can have a lot of influence on your emotions, whether you like it or not, and whether you might admit that or not, and dancing as well, which is one of the, the things that I'm most interested as a possible um, help for kids and a possible help for adults with autism as well. So you all know about the, the concept of stimming and um, how, as a, as a young kid, we used to do a lot, most of us, most of Aspies um, like to stim a lot. The abnormal, repetitive uh, movements, um, abnormal for neurotypicals, obviously, um, that calm us down in situations. And we usually do them more in social situations, which can, which can be disadvantageous for us because um, people will usually label us as strange or not part of the general population, which can be hard, grant you. There will be some people who are accepting of that and who will listen to you, um, but in general, uh, reducing stimming when we're adults is, is usually a, um, a big thing that happens. I mean, I mean, especially in social situations and places where we're not on our own. So dancing. Dancing is a weird one. Dancing is can be abnormal. It can be repetitive, it can be creative, it can be a very energetic and large output of energy, which is very similar to stimming, actually. If I'm feeling stressed or worried in, in social situations, I'll stick on some headphones, do a bit of mild dancing, and that will seem to calm me down quite a lot, nearly as much as um, the strong stimming that I used to do, which was spinning around on the spot. When I go drinking, when I go out with my friends, um, obviously I won't go dancing, you know, right away. Uh, but I do actually tend to have more of a, um, more of an energy when I dance. Like I do, I do lots of different moves. And um, I don't want to dance right now because I'm, I'm not really in the mood for it. But I might do it at the end. Just, just watch out. Watch right for the end of the video. You got to watch it all. 
and then you get to see the present at the end, which is me dancing. But dancing, especially in a situation where it's acceptable, that's a very good opportunity to take advantage of. If you want to go, go into social situations, obviously you need to do the initial introductions with people, uh, and pubs or people that you already know, friends, and then you can get into a situation where the way that you can improve your friendship with people is to dance with them. And that dancing can also be very stimming as well, which can help you relax a lot. And obviously you're allowed to drink as well, so it's combinations. I'm not saying go out there and drink. I'm just trying to highlight the fact that you can cope in these situations and dancing can be a very good outlet for your stress. So that's one way that um, Aspies can be very prone to being an extrovert. You don't have to be an introvert. I'm gonna repeat that again. I love dancing. I love going out with my friends. Um, it's gonna. It's very therapeutic, and after after I've been out, and um, the effects can you know last for a day or two after the confidence that you can get from being able to dance and open and feel good about it is very is very enriching for me um, in particular. So because of our um, very logical way of thinking and ab absorbing information, it might take us a lot longer to develop these social skills that will let us you know, climb this human dominance hierarchy, get some girls, get some boys, uh, depending on your gender and sexuality, and also to get friends as well, which is a very important thing for us. Um, I'm not just talking about superficial friends, I mean proper friends that you can talk to, proper things that you can you can converse with um, in any way. And they don't have to be Aspies, they can be neurotypicals as well, it just depends on you. It depends on how you take yourself and how much effort you put into it. I can tell you now that putting effort into it, putting effort into your socialising, forgetting all that rubbish autism propaganda on just being yourself and just stimming and, and not trying to learn any neurotypical social skills, that's a very unproductive and silly way of going about things. Can you imagine if you were older, if you were 50, 60, 70, 80, never learning these social skills, never being able to use them in job situations, in friendships, to get a wife, get kids, get a husband, kids. Imagine that, you won't have that support network that is very integral to humans. And although it may not seem important to you now, um, if you really analyse yourself, you, you do have those emotions as well. Um, they may not be at the forefront of your reasoning to to have your actions but they do have a large influence on your mental health and all of those kind of um, those kind of things. So this video has more or less been a bit of a ramble from me. I've just come back from Thailand obviously and I wanted to um, do a bit of a different kind of video where I would just talk away about a subject without um, providing um, all the, the regular information that I usually have. Um, I thought it would be a better one-to-one -one thing. Um, I want to connect with um, members of the autistic community. So make sure I'm in the centre um, a lot more often, and I want to I want to really talk to you guys face to face because I do think if any if any kids are watching this, anybody who's younger, even adults, you really need to you know get this stuff sorted. If it's re if it's a problem for you and you're sad and you're lonely and you're depressed and you're turning to social media so that you can message people and turn into groups so that you can get attention and all those kind of things. It's really, really not healthy for you. Work on your social skills. Really, really go at it and I promise you, work on it for four, three, four, five years. Implement it. It's not going to be a, 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 um, a sudden change and switch that you'll go past and you become social, it'll be gradual, so you will make friends along the journey. It's not going to be you reach three years and then you'll you'll be social and you'll be able to do stuff. It's going to be gradual and it's going to take time. Uh, but if you've taken all of the things that I said in this video, um, all the things about the making sure that you critique yourself and make sure, make sure not to have any illusions that you're some grandiose creature, that you're somehow better than neurotypicals, I mean, we are in many, many ways, um, especially in academia. Um, but there's, it's not, it's not an illusion of you know being 
better at you know life or socializing they, they do have a good way of socializing we need to accept that and the other things that I said about the uh, social situations and stuff get off your ass or ass if you're American stop messing about like if there's something that's a problem for you you need to get working at it you need to do the work in order to do it make it your special interest to learn about psychology body language all of those things there's tons and tons of information out there for you to look around absolutely everywhere on the internet get yourself doing that so that you're not lonely you're not depressed and you're gonna have a good life because that's what we want from you and if you don't want any of that stuff and you're happy on your own that's all good as well and that's me uh, ranting over thank you very much for watching this video let me know down in the comments <clears throat> if you like the video and um, give me your critiques on it if you will give me a like if you like the video or dislike if you didn't or you can just don't dislike it and um, write a very angry comment um, I'm not sure how people work on this this website and if you want to see some more content from me whether it's because of my ravishing good looks no. can you see that neck beard it's ridiculous I don't and here, it just doesn't grow here, it grows here and on my neck. Um, I'm going to shave for ages. Yeah, so whether it's my ravaging good looks, or it's my amazing personality, or my informative way of speaking, or my smooth chocolate voice, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell in the corner so that you get notifications when my new videos comes out. Um, because somehow YouTube has decided that if you don't click a bell or for some reason that um, you don't want to be notified about videos from people that you subscribe to which is... I don't know, I don't know what they're doing some neurotypicals, eh? <laughs> Sorry but Yeah, thank you guys for supporting me and I will see you in the next video See you later